On this episode of Travels with Bill, we're visiting the Seven Sister Falls Generating Station in Manitoba's Whiteshell region. Right now, we're downriver looking back at the dam and the station house. There's a little park this way, but certainly you don't have to stand this far away to see the installation. At Seven Sisters, you can get up close. We'll drive over to the dam and give you a better view. You'll find signs along the highway pointing the way to the dam, and you'll park in a gravel lot just beside the dam. From there, it's time to take a little walk. It's certainly possible to drive onto the dam, but it isn't allowed. That's for Manitoba Hydro Vehicles only. Your first time here, you might be a little unsure where to go, but just continue on straight ahead and you'll find some amazing sights. Seven Sisters has always been a favorite of mine and I love to bring people here when I'm in the area because a lot of them don't believe you could just walk right up and see everything. They expect you'd be held back by a fence. Well, thankfully here you aren't. Now it's important to be safe, of course, but there's a lot of fencing. There's safety signs to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. And you kind of have the run of the place as long as hydro staff don't need to go do something. If they do need to cross the bridge, you need to get out of the way. But for the most part, you can walk across here take a look and see exactly how this part of the Manitoba hydro system works. Well, it's not a big shock, really. On one side of the dam, there's a lot of water. On the other side, not as much. And being on this dam itself is one of the best spots to see what's downriver. Look at that. It's the way the Winnipeg River would have been years ago before there was a dam and a lake here. Very beautiful, isn't it? Maybe one of the best ways to see this is to jump into the air. So here we are on that same walkway, but we're flying over by drone. See all the water on the one side? That's the lake. The other side, of course, is where the river used to go. The big building in the background? That's the generating station. And where the blue spot is there? Well, that's the spot where they can control the water levels. We'll take a closer look at that. So the way this works is pretty simple. Say there was a lot of rain and they needed to get water out of the lake so that it wouldn't flood the dam. Well, this structure has two gates on it. They would lift up and allow the water to just whoosh on down the river without going through the generating station. You can see from the air how tall it is and from here you can kind of get a picture of that too. It's fenced off so you can't get too close, but you can certainly peek through the fence and see how it works. The big screws here would lower those gates or raise those gates as needed to let the water go whooshing on by. Now, while we're speaking of safety, there's life rings here should you fall in. If you fall in on the water side, obviously that might help. If you fall in on the other side, well, I'm not sure the life ring is really going to solve the problems you're going to have. But there is a nice big fence here. It's a good enough fence to keep the kids in and you'll feel pretty safe, but keep a hold of them just in case. There's some really neat architecture here as well. Check out the old fashioned lighting on the bridge. Now you can tell it's been here for a while, but isn't it so cool looking? It's the type of thing you'd want to find in an antique store, I suppose, but it's on the bridge, it's got glass pieces there. It's really, really cool to see. Worth taking pictures of for sure. Now, as far as being walking across, pretty soon you come to the generating station itself. This would be the station house. It's tall really tall. It has the Seven Sisters name on it and you can see that from miles back. Now you can see where the water is coming out of the generating house. That's actually making power as we're here and that's the little channel where that water goes down and rejoins the river. We'll see it better from the air in a minute but suffice it to say the water that makes power goes down that way. This is the spot where the water goes that doesn't make power and of course the hydro lines then carry it away. There's not a lot of water here, but you did see some leaking through before, and the dam always leaks a little bit, but not enough to be worried about. Normally we could walk right down here, and there's actually some informative displays on the other side, but at the time of our visit, they're doing work on the station, so we can't actually go down that walkway. We will certainly take a look up, way up the station. See the windows in there? Pretty cool. Now they're blocked off for the most part. You can't see too much. Sometimes you can see in a little bit, but it does give you that history of what this generating station was like long, long ago. Now this is the door where staff get in. You can't go in there, but you may see staff come once in a while as they go in to check on something or like they're doing when we're here working on the station itself it's such a big big building 
Obviously, it took a very long time to make this, but it's a job done well, and it's lasted forever. We'll jump back into the air because we give you a better view here of what's going on. So there again is the little blue structure where they can raise and lower the gates to let water go whooshing through. But as we come around the side here, you can see the water that's leaking. Where it's coming out is actually from logs. Well, sort of logs. They're square timbers. The whole dam is lower than the lake level, and there's logs put in on top of it as a way to raise and lower the lake itself. You might see that thing that looks a bit like a railway track. Now there's a machine that goes down that and lets them take those logs out if they need to. The water you're seeing leaking is actually pushing its way through the little cracks between the logs and cascading out. You can also see where that danger keep away sign is, the actual gates that would go up if they needed to lower the lake a lot to let a lot of rainwater or such through. You may say to yourself, how much pressure could water really have? But think about how much is coming through the cracks, the very small cracks between those timbers, and how it's gushing out. Well, imagine how much more pressure there is at the bottom of the dam. Now, we're flying over top of some of those hydro lines. We'll make sure we don't hit them with the drone. But let's take a look at the generating station itself. We're downriver here, and you can see the swirling water coming out. It certainly looks to me like there's two turbines running right now couple things at play here. There's a drought going on while we're filming this, so it's not like there's a lot of excess water, but they're also doing station maintenance. I don't know if they're only running two because of the lack of water, or if it's because of the maintenance. In either case, it sure looks like two turbines are running at the time of our visit. Now you might recognize these rocks too. This is what the white shell area looks like most places, and immediately on the other side of the dam it used to look like that too. Well, this is where the river used to run on by, and of course it would have been snaking through here. The dam itself is making that lake be there. Without the dam, there'd just be a river here like there used to be many, many years ago. Off in the distance is the old Seven Sister Falls town site. We'll see that a little better in a few moments. And we're looking now kind of towards that park where we saw that first image way back when. You can see the little road down there. You can drive down into that if you look around a little bit, although the view of the dam is much better from here where we are on the dam itself. The capacity of the generating station right now is 165 megawatts, and in a typical year, the station could produce 990 million kilowatt hours. It's the largest generating station on the Winnipeg River. Power is transmitted over five lines to Winnipeg. The sixth and seventh lines go to the White Shell and then on to Kenora, Ontario. The powerhouse itself is 128 meters long and it can discharge 1,146 cubic meters of water per second. We're flying down the discharge channel here. This is where the water that's been through the generating station actually goes and then rejoins the river. Now further downstream, that's a bit more of a picture of what the river may have looked like without a dam. Now you may think fishing, you may think boating, you may think a lot of things, but don't do any of that until you understand how dams work. There's a lot of currents at play here. To bring a boat here and not understand it, well, it could be a really bad end to what would have been a really nice day if you'd stayed a little further away. Obviously there's currents going into the dam, but there's also water coming back out of it into the river. Unless you really understand all of that, probably best to keep a fair distance from the dam. Now there are some markers where you have to be extra careful, but that's really for the power users that understand what they're doing. If you're new to the area, a mile away, probably a good idea at least. Come see it, but don't fish near it. Now when we're talking about a dam, we get to talk about all sorts of dam terms and use the word dam quite a lot. So here's another dam term for you, the forebay. Well, I would call that the lake. That area in front of it with all the water, that's 21 square kilometers and the forebay is retained by more than 12 kilometers of dikes. Construction of the station was by the Winnipeg Electric Company. That became part of Manitoba Hydro. It started in 1929. The first power was made here in 1931. At that point, it could make 75 megawatts from three turbine generator units. The second stage of construction began in 1948 when the last three units were added. The last units were installed in 1952. When first constructed, operating staff lived in the town site. That's what we would call Old Seven Sisters. The plant was automated in the 70s and put under remote control and since then has needed a much smaller staff on site. 
we're visiting in the summer of 2021, and unfortunately, it's forest fire season in Manitoba. The province has been covered by thick smoke for weeks, and you can see it in our drone shot as it fades off into the distance. That's all forest fire smoke, and it's been so much of a trouble. A lot of people having trouble breathing with so much smoke. It kind of makes for a neat picture of the dam off in the distance, so probably when you visit, it'll be a lot clearer and you can see a lot further, but it is kind of cool to see it emerging from the fog there up ahead of us. Now imagine for a moment the damage that could happen if that dam just whoop, disappeared. Well, that lake, of course, would come rushing down the river and it wouldn't be very good for a lot of people downstream. You know, we haven't talked about trains yet. And maybe we should, because there is a way we could work trains into the Seven Sister Falls Generating Station. My first visit, I thought, hey, did there used to be a railway track here? Because there's really not a lot of evidence for that, except for a couple weird things. On the deck of the dam itself, it has a railway track. Well, that's kind of explained away, because there's a specialized railway car at the far end of that track that rolls out. It has the winches on it to take those logs in and out of each of the little hatches right under the track. But then you see, there's a bit of a spot here too that looks like it may have been a railway right-of-way. Well, I'll show that to you in a moment. There's also something that looks like it could have been a train station, but it's a Manitoba Hydro site, so, well, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Turns out, though, there was a train here. Consider the Manitoba Eastern Railway. That's right, a 13-mile railway. It went from Whitemouth to Seven Sister Falls. It was built in 1928 to deliver the construction supplies to make the dam and generating station. Well, it existed until the mid-1950s and then it was gone. There's not a lot you could find of it except over the White Mouth River. A little bit of the bridge still exists. Well, here it is. And if you find just the right spot, you can see it too. I know, not a lot of train track there, but it's what used to be and the history of the fact that much of this appeared by railway. Oh, I love it. Electricity and railway together. Can't do better than that, can we? Let's talk for a moment about that yellow thing you see in the water. That's one of those safety buoys that's keeping you away from getting too close to the dam. If you did happen to be boating here, that's the last place you want to be. But realistically, you don't want to be anywhere close to the generating station. You see how much water is coming out of it? Well, obviously that much water is also going into it. Now you see a tower there, that's part of the Manitoba Hydro Communication System that lets them tie this generating station in with all the other generating stations and remote control it, and of course, lots and lots of hydro lines. When you're driving to the White Shell area from Winnipeg, you'll pass under a bunch of those lines, and if you look really close, you'll see them saying Seven Sisters on them. There's a hydro station just a little ways down the way from here with a lot of transformers and switching equipment. Some of the lines stop off there and some continue straight on towards Winnipeg. We're going to jump ahead here a little bit and get on the other side of the dam and show you that town site. Now this is the original town site of Seven Sisters. What you would call Seven Sisters now is well a little ways away from here. In fact, we have another episode all about the newer town site. But this is the spot where all those hydro employees lived, worked, and played too. There's lots of recreation facilities here. It's kind of a cool little part of the old town. The road comes in here, there's still some houses around, but you'll see a lot of other stuff here too. Now down below in the left hand side, that's the parking lot where you're going to park if you're coming to visit the dam. Well, if you look just right, you can even see the travels with Bill fan down there. There's quite a good spot there for people to park in, so don't worry, there'll be room for you too. A little closer look at the houses here, and then we're going to swing back around the other side a bit and show you what, well, looks like a railway station, but really isn't anymore. We don't know if it was. I couldn't find enough history about the area to be able to tell you definitively if that's where the train used to stop. I suspect, though, it probably wasn't. I think it's always been a hydro site. Now, see that row of trees and see that little path there? That's what I suspect to be the old railway right-of-way. It's elevated up a little bit, and it's very straight, takes very gentle curves. Well, to me, that looks exactly like where the railway track would have been that originally connected to the dam. I couldn't find a map of it to show you either though, so again, I could be slightly wrong, but we know there was a train track here. We'll take a closer look at that building down below. These days at least, it's used as a Manitoba Hydro Training Center. It's kind of cool. It's called the Seven Sisters Training and Conference Center. 
Okay, maybe it's not the most original name, but it's kind of a neat building. Imagine being hydro staff and coming out here to something like this. It's obviously a heritage building. Some neat steps in the front, and then a second set of them a little further on. They're doing some work on this, obviously, too. Some renovations. It's had new windows, but there's still, well, maybe a little bit to do. Kind of a cool place to look, though, and, well, if you're into old buildings, neat place to take a picture, too. But there's something else in Seven Sisters, the old town site at least, you really need to see. You may have noticed from the drone there was an outdoor hockey rink. This is on the wall of it. Check out the mural. Isn't it amazing? Now, obviously, you can see where the generating station is there. You can see Seven Sisters, but you see so many things, all parts of the white shell here. We're going to get in close and show you a little bit more of it. But, oh, you need to stop, get some pictures here, and look at it. The camera doesn't do justice. See how some of it looks like it's in 3D? Well, it is. That owl, for example, really pops out. So do the fish. Now, if you look really closely, you'll even see a Sasquatch in here. That's kind of cool. There's a tractor, too. And if you look at the right spot, there's also a train. See the people on the boat? Hey, there's the Sasquatch right under the 307 sign. Tractor up at the top, some people tubing there as well. Obviously, this is a bit of a stylized drawing, but it's so amazing. Even without the dam and everything we've seen already, it would be worth stopping just to see the amount of work they put into this. Hey, there's that train up in the corner. You know, we're not that far away from some big railway tracks. You can even see the Esso. <laughs> cool, isn't it? Some fish in the dam. So this is the Seven Sister Falls Generating Station. Now we do have that other episode. It's about sort of the newer town site that you would visit as a tourist. You have to turn off the road to get to all of this, but we'll show you that newer town site. And there's a lot more to learn about the white shell on the channel too. We were here for a week in the summer filming, so you can certainly see about everything. Have you subscribed to Travels with Bill yet? We'd love to have you as a subscriber. Then you'll be one of the first to know each time we release a new episode. They usually come out uh, once or twice a week, and we try to always find some interesting things to show you. Sometimes we're traveling, sometimes we're traveling in time through history, and other times it's just something neat we happen upon. No matter what we're showing, though, we'd love to have you as part of the Travels with Bill family. Well, that does it for our tour of the Seven Sisters Falls Generating Station and the Old Town site. We'll see you next time. Farewell for now from Seven Sisters in the White Shell region of beautiful Manitoba.